Today, I'm very excited to introduce you guys to a new house on my channel, which means I never spoke about this fragrance house before. BDK is an independent perfume house based in Palais Royal, Paris, which they produce very creative fragrances with high quality of raw materials inspired by characters, silhouettes, and moments. The owner of BDK is the young man David Benedic, who was born in 1989, son of a father of Romanian heritage and a mother born on the border of Algeria and Morocco. David Benedic's grandparents were amongst the first authorized independent fragrance stores to distribute name brand perfumes in their shop back in 1950s in Paris, so he was always surrounded by perfumes. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to review the infamous Cri Charnel Extrait version, which was launched after the original Parfum version in 2022. The notes behind this fragrance is Mathilde Bijaoui. Cri Charnel Extrait falls under woody, spicy category. So I never smelled the original version before, so I cannot compare them, but hopefully in the future, I will be able to do a comparison video for you guys. But from what I'm smelling here today, this was love at the first sniff. This is a true mass-pleasing, sophisticated, classy, yet luscious and somewhat delicious scent. Very heavy and quite powerful sillage on the first spray. So a lot of reviewers, they got the opening phase of this scent completely wrong, or let's say they got it the other way around. And again, just concentrated on the dry down of this fragrance. And this is usually the problem that not a lot of reviewers take their time to understand and study the life cycle of the perfume. All right, so let's spray some of this and see what we get. God, this is so sexy. I fell in love with this on the first initial spray when I unboxed this for Instagram. When I sprayed this on my hand, I literally fell in love with it. So this one definitely captures you right away. It's one of those fragrances that you definitely don't have to wait for it to settle down. It does have a very powerful sillage on the opening, the first spray, but it's not pungent in a way where you're like, okay, I need to give it time for it to settle down. Right away, it's a beautiful scent, very sexy. Um, so a Gris Charnel Extra version opens up very earthy, spicy, woody, and somewhat smoky, believe it or not. You can definitely smell a mix of both milky, sweet, creamy facets and bitter green elements, which must be the opening phase of fig. There is also this prominent, earthy, smoky vetiver, very present in the opening, accompanied with the sweetie alcoholic tones as well. So yeah, I mean, I've tested this before. I sprayed it many times on my skin, on paper, kind of to test it for you guys. And the opening is not as sweet as the dry down as some of the reviewers have it backwards. The opening is actually, as I said, very earthy, bitter green, warm, spicy, woody, with a sharp, sweet, resinous, aromatic and spicy note with a bitter aftertaste, which also must be a big dose of cardamom, which is accompanied with a sweet, herbaceous green element, which must be black tea. A strong straw-like, fruity smell like honey and tea-like, as well as words like warm, sweet, caramel, cumarine, fruit, honey, and tonka that comes to my mind, which are the characteristics of Zista's Incanus. We have a big dose of bourbon vetiver in here, which creates the smoky, dusty, earthy, woody, and green nuances in the opening as well. The orris root or the iris also helps with the earthy, woody, powdery, violet floral-like nuances, which also has this boiled carrot-like smell. So the iris definitely complements the Zistus Incanus, bourbon vetiver, fig, cardamom, and black tea very nicely. The cardamom is definitely very big in the second phase of the opening. Now, as we get to the heart of this scent, all these sharp and earthy green nuances calm down and the fruitiness, sweetness, and powderness of the scent starts coming in very strong. At this point, the fragrance becomes very woody, aromatic, vanillic, powdery, and sweet. This fragrance definitely changes its odor profile throughout its life cycle. Yeah, this is getting better and better. And at this point, this almost smells like a beautiful black smoked gingerbread tea with almost a boozy vanilla rum-like silhouette. 
It feels like this gingerbread tea is kind of burnt on the opening, but as it dries down, you get hints of this soft layer of dried fig inside the gingerbread and thick layer of creamy glaze on top of it. In the dry down, the fragrance becomes sweeter, woodier, more powdery, less fruity, and more vanillic. The tonka and sandalwood play very hard to make this fragrance somewhat gourmandish, and the Indonesian patchouli adds depth and sensuality to the addictive parts of this fragrance. So all in all, what you get with Gris Charnel Extrait, it is definitely earthy, smoky, warm, spicy, woody, green aromatic, tea-like, and fig-like nuances with a big dose of cardamom. It is vanillic, powdery, sweet, fruity, with a beautiful dose of iris. Now, as far as the performance and longevity goes, this one right here, it lasts between nine to 10 hours on my skin, so it is a long-lasting fragrance. Now, as far as the projection sillage goes, it has an enormous sillage, especially on the initial spray, which projects about five to six feet. So it does have a phenomenal sillage. Now, as far as the uh, uh, compliments goes, this one right here is no brainer. It gets a lot of compliments. I've been wearing this a lot lately, actually just going even to grocery store, I've been wearing this and I've been getting unsolicited compliments. I had people coming up to me, they were like, what are you wearing? It smells so good. I actually had the lady at the register, she's like, God, you smell so delicious. So. It is one of those fragrances that gets a lot of compliments. And I've heard that a lot of people say that this version is more, uh, like it leans more on the masculine side. But to me, this one definitely feels very unisex. And I would say both parties would get a lot of compliments with this. Now, as far as the versatility goes, I would probably wear this more in the cooler temperature, like fall or winter time. Uh, but as far as like the events goes, I would wear this at any event, uh, dressed down, dressed up. It's an easy fragrance to wear and it's an easy fragrance to like. So it's a very mass pleasing type of a scent and um, it could easily be your signature scent. So I would say this one is very versatile. Now, as far as the uniqueness goes, uh, I don't have any fragrance that this one resembles it or it doesn't remind me on any fragrance that I know of. I haven't smelled the original Parfum version, so I wouldn't be able to compare this. But to me, just that green, earthy opening, that smoky opening, and how it completely turns into this uh, woody, sweet, fruity, uh, cardamom, uh, kind of sultry type of a scent makes this fragrance very unique to me. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we'll get to my video. That's all I have for Gris Charnel, the extrait version. If you own this fragrance, please let me know in the comment section what's your take on it. And if you don't own this, I'm telling you, you definitely have to get your nose on this one because it is a beauty. And that's it, you guys. That's all I have. Thank you so much. And hopefully I'll see you guys soon with another video. Bye.